Okay, hi there guys. Uh, today I'm going to show you a, uh, a uh, software uh, modem TNC uh, similar to the UZ7HO sound modem software. Um, if you haven't seen that video, um, I will link it in the description down below. Uh, but today I'm going to show you how to uh, set up um, another piece of software uh, called Dire Wolf. And I will be using an ICOM IC9100, that's 9100, um, for, the, uh, for the demo um, of this. Um, but first and foremost, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to download the Dire Wolf um, software. And uh, it's available on the uh, GitHub repository. And you can just go to this website right here. Uh, don't worry, I will put a link for this down in the de in the uh, description below, uh, and you'll be able to, uh, to download this. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to want to download this. Um, I would not recommend getting version 1.5 right now, as uh, at the time of this uh, video, uh, it's being beta tested. Um, feel you can download it if you want, but um, if you're looking for a more stable release, come down here. Uh, to version 1.4 that was released in April of last year. Um, so uh, go ahead and download this version. It works great. This is what I'm using and uh, no no problems at all there. Um, okay, so um, you'll you'll get this downloaded. Uh, I'm using uh, Safari right now. Um, so pardon pardon that uh, this is uh, for uh, um, Windows. So, um, I'll sw swipe over here to my Windows uh, machine. And uh, what you're going to do is it downloads a zip file, um, extract it. You can extract it anywhere you want to on your computer. Um, it doesn't need to be in the program files or anything like that. Um, so, for me, I just put it in my uh, ham radio software folder here. Uh, that's where I sent it and extracted it. And,. Uh, once you've extracted it to wherever you want to, uh, wherever you wanted it, uh, go to that folder uh, and open the Dire Wolf folder, and you should see a bunch of files that look like this. Uh, you see this, and you're good to go. Um, next, we need to configure the program here, and for the ICOM IC9100, I'm going to show you what you need to do. So, in any case, regardless of what radio you're doing, you do need to set up the uh, uh, the computer, um, or I'm sorry, you do need to set up the, the, the software to make it work uh, for your particular uh, radio. Uh, this will work with signal links, uh, this will work with um, radios with built-in sound card interfaces like the IC9100 from ICOM or ICOM7300, uh, I believe that has a, a uh, um, USB uh control on it as well so um, yeah um, so this will work uh, uh, with uh, those uh, uh, radios and external sound cards as well uh, it's just a matter of uh, getting everything set up properly uh, but for the de for this demonstration as I said before uh, we'll use a uh, ICOM IC9100 so we're gonna open this config file here um, and let me make this larger. Here we go. Okay, so as you can see, everything is uh, commented out uh, by the uh, pound symbol, as you see here. Um, the nice thing is, it, the config file does a very good job explaining everything that uh, uh, th that you'll need to do. Uh, but for me, at least, it helps to actually see it in person, um, just to see how everything is done. Uh, so we'll um, we'll just kind of go through this, and we will uh, walk through uh, everything here step by step, and you can see um, how we've got this set up here. So um, we're gonna do um, we're gonna first get the sound uh, sound card uh, uh, set up first here. Uh, so the first audio device, um, which is your channel zero, channel one, um, uh, if it's uh, stereo. Uh, it is not. So we're going to uh, configure um, the uh, sound card first. Um, and as you can see here, this is all uh, commented out. Uh, to uncomment un something, just delete the uh, pound symbol. 
Uh, I just left everything commented, and then I just added uh, my device here, a device, uh, and then you do the quote, um, and then the name of your... Um, uh, the microphone and the and the speaker. So in my case here, I'll just show you. I'm going to right click here and I will go to playback devices. Uh, this is my radio and this is just what I've named it uh, just for uh, simplicity and I've done the same thing for recording as well. Uh, that's what I've named it. Uh, it just keeps everything simple and then I know what is what. Um, and I highly recommend that you guys do the same as well. Um, just to make sure that, uh, that everything is, uh, uniform and whatnot. And you'll need to adjust your audio levels as well. Um, so you can go to properties and go to levels here. Uh, this is the sweet spot I found for the, uh, 9100. Um, and that is showing, um, as a percentage. Uh, so we'll go ahead and close out of that. So that's what I what I've done here, and as you can see in the config file here, um, all I did was just type in the name of the the sound interface, and you do it twice uh, because one is for the playback and one is for recording. Um, so one's for transmit and one is for receive. So that's the line that you need to add. So add this quote whatever your whatever you named your radio um, or signal link end quote quote, whatever you've named your radio or signal link, end quote, and there you go. Um, that's all you need to do there. Next, we're going to scroll down just a little bit here, and pardon me for going slow here. I just want to make sure that I uh, have everything uh, uh, all set um, uh, correct for you. Um, make sure that modem 1200 is uncommented. Uh, this is a 1200 baud since... Um, the application that we're going to use for this is um, for uh, um, VHF packet. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is what's used for APRS. This is what's used for bulletin boards, uh, VHF packet, WinLink, uh, and all that stuff. Um, if you were going to use this on HF, you could uncomment the 300. Uh, and uh, use this on uh, HF as well, which is really cool that you can do that. Um, so just make sure that modem 1200 is uh, uncommented there, and as you can see, it doesn't have the pound symbol in front of it, so therefore it is. Uh, we'll keep coming down here. Uh, and then for the ICOM radios, what I had to do is I had to uncomment PTT, um, and actually, let me rephrase that. I actually uh, just left these two examples commented, and then I just added my own line, uh, which is PTT, um, and that's the name of my COM port. But if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that I use a special program called the CAT7200 um, PTT program, um, and... Uh, uh, it creates a virtual COM port uh, because for some reason the ICOM radio um, doesn't put out a, a COM port for a PTT, which is very weird. A lot of programs have difficulty with it. Um, so I've so somebody was smart and made a utility uh, which created a virtual COM port, which found uh, which basically manipulates the CIV commands and ICOM radios to uh, just extract the the CIV command for PTT and make it a COM port, which thank you uh, to that person. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so what I did is I just made a new line here, uh, PTT, and that's my COM port that I use, COM3, and then I have to use RTS, which is a request to send, uh, if I uh, remember my uh, acronym correctly. Um, so just make sure that uh, you you do this. And again, this is if you have um, uh, the 9100. If you're using a signal link, I believe you do not need to um, uncomment any of this stuff uh, because it's all handled with Vox. So I believe you don't need to worry about any of that um, uh, right now and right here. So... Um, yeah, if you're using a Vox PTT like a signal link, you could ignore um, you can ignore this uh, this setting. So there you go. 
Um, and I believe that's all I needed to do to get up and running here. Um, the only other thing that I think I did was I did somewhere in here, and I don't remember where it was. I did put in my call sign in here, um, and I don't remember where that is off the top of my head. Um, I'm not seeing it. Um, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Um, I did it. The only time you would need to do that is if you're going to use the um, Direwolf uh, standalone for, for something or for applications that can require it. But for uh, bulletin boards, uh, where I'm using multi-PSK, uh, and for um, WinLink, um, it's already got my call sign in there, and it's going to pass that anyway. So yeah, you don't need to worry about uh, putting your call sign in here. Um, once you've done those things, you can come up to file and you can save it. Um, just make sure you save it, uh, and then you can close out of this. And that's that's it. Um, that's all you need to do to get uh, to get this uh, uh, software-based uh, packet engine uh, up and running. Um, so now we'll go ahead and I'll just show you real quickly. I'll do a demo here. Let me turn up my volume on my radio. All right, let's do this. So I'm going to go ahead and open my uh, uh, com port uh, emulator, the uh, oops, the uh, CAT7200 program. That's the name of the program. Uh, and this is the program that uses uh, that uh, sniffs out the CIV command out of the ICOM radio and um, makes it a com port. Uh, and I talk about that in some of my uh, other videos, so I won't get into it here. So I open this and I open up the port. It is open. Now I'll go ahead and open up Direwolf. And this is what Direwolf looks like here. Uh, as you can see, my uh, I've got the asterisks uh, next to my uh, uh, the ICOM 9100. That means everything is good to go. Um, green text is good. Uh, it means that... Uh, uh, everything is uh, all set up and is uh, properly uh, configured. So, um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much that here. Um, I'm also going to just quickly, uh, uh, let's see, I'm just quickly looking at my notes here, see if I missed anything. Uh, it doesn't look like I missed anything here, which is good. Cool. All right. So this is all set. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to open up uh, WinLink Express and we will do a uh, packet. We'll do a packet session and we'll go ahead and open it. Uh, and then we'll click on settings. And I'll just show you what you need to, what you need to do. Um, for the uh, packet TNC type, select it as KISS. TNC model is normal. Set your ser serial port to TCP uh, and use the home IP address of 127.001 and use the port 8100. Uh, you might need to change that in the config file in Dire Wolf. Um, uh, you might need to change the uh, KISS port. I can't remember. Um, but uh, if you do, go ahead and change it uh, there to 8100 because that's usually the standard. I've, I've been finding that's the standard port number for a KISS, for ev all, everything KISS. Um, and if you've already been using UZ7HO sound modem software, all of this should be good to go for you. Oops, I zoomed in, so that probably looked weird. I'm sorry about that. Uh, let me explain this again. So select KISS, normal, uh, TCP for the serial port. Uh, use the t uh, TCP uh, host port of 127.001, uh, and the port number is 8100. Uh, just make sure that uh, you have that all set up and properly uh, configured in the Direwolf config file. Um, this isn't used in there, but I think for I think they use a different port number for KISS in Direwolf. So just make sure that you change it to 8100 in the, uh, in the uh, Direwolf uh, config file. Um, and if you've already been using um, uh, the UZ7HO sound modem software, um, all these settings should be good to go. Uh, the only thing, just make sure that this uh, top section here is uh, good to go. Uh, and then you can hit update, but in my case, I'm just going to hit cancel. You should be good to go. So I'm going to connect to a node here, and uh, we'll see what uh, 
we'll see what happens. I should comment though, one other thing before I start this demo, you might need to adjust um, your, your TX delay a little bit in the direwolf config file. Um, that's pretty easy to do, you just need to find it um, and just change it um, a little bit. You might need to make it shorter depending on the application um, that you're using the direwolf uh, sound modem software. Um, but uh, in my cases, I didn't need to change anything. It just worked right out of the box uh, for me. But uh, uh, you might need to change uh, some stuff around. Um, so, yeah, with that, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll get started here. So we'll start a session. We'll see what happens. Here we go. And there it is. I've got a connection. And you can see what the uh, Dire Wolf program is doing here. So yeah, that's what Dire Wolf is doing right now in the background. And it looks like I've got an email uh, coming in. Yep, it's uh, for the uh, Northern California wind like net that I check into. So I'm running a beta version of uh, Windlink Express. Um, you've probably have seen in my channel the Vara and RDOP uh, setups. And I'm using a, a beta version of uh, Winlink Express to make those modes work. Um, so um, um, I've noticed some things on uh, the packet side, but it, it still works. Um, and it just takes a little bit for commands to go through. But there's nothing wrong. It works just fine. So yeah, this should be coming through right now. And it looks like it is. And this is probably just a confirmation email letting me know that they've got my check-in for the net, for the Winlink net. So, um, yep, it received it, and we're going to disconnect. And that's it. And that's it. And for some reason, I get an air reading kiss bite. Um, from the client application closing connection. I'm not sure if that's supposed to happen, um, but uh, it hasn't been a problem for me at uh, uh, here on my station, at least with the uh, 9100. So that's it, guys. That is the Dire Wolf sound modem software. So if you're looking for a different uh, program to try other than the UZ7HO sound modem software, give Dire Wolf a try. Um, I uh, really enjoy it, and I do need to get a, give a shout-out to Jeff. I'm, for privacy, I'm not going to give out his call sign because he doesn't know I'm making this video. Um, but his instruction and demo of it at the uh, Holland Amateur Radio Club uh, was invaluable. And uh, thank you, Jeff. Um, your, your, your guidance has uh, made this uh, video possible. So take care, guys. 73s, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.